3D scan models from Megascans or from photogrammetry are absolutely amazing. But when you take a look at the topology, taking a look at some of the Megascans models in general, sometimes they're a bit less than ideal. There are many situations where you just need better topology from your scans or even better UVs, especially if you want to work with hard surface stuff or work with displacement. However, texture reprojection in reality capture makes fixing that honestly a little bit too easy. So let's take a look at how I scanned my trusty axe here and how I improved the initial scan to make it a whole lot better. We can take a simplified model that looks like this and very easily make it like this. It's not always necessary to have clean topology. And with Nanite in Unreal Engine 5, topology on non-deforming meshes isn't quite as important as it used to be. But like I said, there are many cases where you do want clean topo. Now, before we get started, I want to preface that you should know how photogrammetry works beforehand. And I have several videos to teach you everything you need to know about 3D scanning down below. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Capturing Reality, and we'll be using Reality Capture in this video. So let's start off with the core basics here. We have two models. The original high-res scan, which is sitting at around 4.9 to almost 5 million triangles. Then we have the simplified version of the scan right here, but the topology looks a little bit like this. Hopefully you can see this in the video. You'll see it's kind of all triangulated. It's a little bit lumpy. For a hard surface model like this, it is usually pretty important to have a topology that is very clean to get the smooth surfaces, because even with a normal map or a displacement map, it's going to shade a little bit oddly. So having a good topology to begin with on your low res model is going to be a whole heck of a lot better, even if you're using Nanite. So let's say I want to clean up the high res model a little bit, because you can see here, the high res model is a tiny bit lumpy, even though I was using a fully cross-polarized setup, very shiny surfaces like this are often very difficult to scan and get a very clean mesh out of. So I'm going to start by exporting the high-res model into ZBrush and polish up the surface a little bit, because extremely shiny metallic surfaces like this can often be pretty tricky to scan and turn out a little bit lumpy, even though I used a fully cross-polarized setup. But no worries, that's where this workflow comes in really handy. Once I've polished up the surfaces I want fixed, you'll see here in ZBrush, I am polishing up that metal surface. Now I'm doing this in ZBrush, but you can do this in Blender or Maya or 3ds Max or whatever. Once I've polished up the surfaces I want fixed, I'm going to re-export that high-res model back into Reality Capture. I'm going to import it by going to the Mesh Models tab up here, then click on Import model. From there, I'm going to build the texture again. Now, when you're editing a model, just be careful that no transformed or scaling is being done to the mesh. If you re-import your mesh into Reality Capture and the mesh doesn't match the orientation or the scale of the original scan, I recommend looking into the .rc info file. I'll put a link to that in the description. That may be the solution to your issues. Once that is done, that is going to be our main high poly mesh that we will be working from. On the left here, we're going to name this high underscore clean to differentiate between all the meshes and keep our outliner here a little bit tidy. This part of the process is pretty important because using this clean polished model, we're going to get a clean normal and displacement map in the texture reach projection part of this video coming really soon. So just hang tight. So this model is really important. Now we can simplify this mesh to bring down the poly count to a more reasonable level by using the simplify tool right up here. And in the simplify settings, I'm going to set the target poly count to roughly 50,000. But when we do that, the topology looks like this. For my own sake, I don't really care about the UVs that much right now, but I do sometimes want a cleaner mesh. So again, into ZBrush, I'm going to use ZRemesher to generate a cleaner model. Again, I'm using ZBrush here, but you can use whatever retopology tool you want. The process is the same. This is also the time where you should do your UVs if you want cleaner UVs. I don't want to spend too much time on this part right here because there's a hundred ways of doing retopo, and that isn't the purpose of this video. 
When you're happy with the result of your retopology, you can export the mesh and import it back into Reality Capture like we did before. You'll see now we have a new component on the left hand side here, and I'm going to rename this to low underscore clean again to keep it nice and tidy. That brings us to the exciting part of this video, the entire reason you came here to begin with, the texture reprojection tools. How do we get the textures from our high res model here and bake them down onto our low res model right here? So we'll be using the texture reprojection tools directly built into Reality Capture. So if you haven't taken the time to actually UV your low res model yet, now is the time to do it. So I'm gonna be going to the mesh model tool here click on unwrap and in the unwrap tool settings, I'm going to set the UV resolution settings that I want here. Hit the unwrap button right here, hit yes. And there you go. Now we know that our mesh is textured because when we go to the view mode here, you'll see we have a nice checker pattern. Once that is done, we're gonna to go to the scene 1D tools tab right here. And we're gonna click on the texture reprojection button right here. You'll see now we have a new tab here at the bottom left of the screen. We've got source model and result model. So the source model is going to be essentially, well, as the name implies, the source model that you want to copy the textures and normal map and displacement info from. So in this case, I'm going to set this to high clean because that is my new cleaned polished mesh that I got from ZBrush. And the result model is the one that you want to bake all of that information to. So in this case, it's going to be our low clean. Now, reprojection distance is, I usually set this to automatic and it's fine, but you may need to set it to custom in case you get some discrepancy between the high and the low res model. You may get some texture mismatches if there is too much difference between the two. But as long as your retopo is really good, automatic should be fine. Next, we've got super sampling, which is basically going to be the more samples per texel you use, the better fidelity your texture will be, but it takes much longer to build. Again, I usually set this to automatic and it's been fine for my own case. Color reprojection is kind of as the name implies. Do you want to reproject the albedo map, the actual color map that you got on your high res model? Yes, usually you do. So I'll leave this as enable. And then you'll see here, we've got source layer. So we wanna make sure that we can actually copy over the correct color layer from our high res model. So going to high clean here, I've got only one color layer and that's fine. But sometimes you may have multiple color layers there. So be sure that you copy from the right one. And that's where the color reprojection source layer comes in handy. Next, we have the texture sampling method. Again, I usually set this to automatic, but you do have two options. We've got nearest and trilinear. Trilinear will help get rid of some jagged edges or some kind of alias look in your textures. And nearest is not quite as smooth as trilinear, but it can be a little bit sharper. But for my own sake, like I said, I'll set this to automatic. Now the next two settings here are the important ones. We've got displacement reprojection and normal reprojection. And those are, as the name implies, do you want to get a displacement map and a normal map out of this bake? If so, set them both to enabled like so. And now we're ready to reproject by clicking the reproject button right here. It's actually remarkably fast to work with. You usually don't need to wait very long. And now just like that, we've reprojected the color displacement and normal map information from our high res mesh onto our low res mesh. And we can visualize all of the textures that we just baked by clicking on low clean right here and opening up the model textures tab. You'll see we've got color layer, which we're already visualizing. We've got the displacement layer, which may look weird. This is probably not what you're used to seeing, but in this case, Reality Capture's way of visualizing the displacement map is whatever is blue is whatever is being pushed above zero, and whatever is more red is what's being displaced in negative values. But don't worry, you will get a regular grayscale displacement map on export. Then we've got our normal map and the visualization here is a world space normal map, but don't worry, you will get a tangent space normal map when you export it from Reality Capture and into your DCC of choice, whether it's Unreal Engine or Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, whatever. From there, 
I repeated the exact same thing with the version of the scan that had the leather sheath on the axe to have both the bare axe and the leather sheath itself as a separate model. Texture reprojection is frankly so dang easy to use and I'm not even entirely sure why I haven't used it more myself. Now if you like this render I made here in Unreal Engine and you want to see a video on how I made this, go ahead and leave a comment down below and if there's enough interest I may consider making a video about it. So let me know. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. A big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and as always, happy rendering.